It seems like you can't load a, a news article or throw a stone without hitting something that has to do with AI these days, right? Like, I feel like at the end of 2023, when we do our year in review, uh, AI is going to be the number one story. And when Time Magazine selects the person of the year, they're going to select AI. It's just the way it is. AI is the hot thing right now. And here's the thing. I, I honestly feel that you are doing yourself a disservice by saying, you know what? I don't care about AI. I, have, I, I want nothing to do with it. That's almost like saying, you know what? I want nothing to do with digital photography. I just, I have nothing. I have no reason to know anything about it. And I think that that's, you're, you're making a mistake there. You should at least know what it can do because in some cases it can do some very cool things to help you with your photography. Now, when I think about AI, I think there are two primary schools of thought or two primary categories when it comes to the visual medium. The first is generating something out of nothing using a prompt. So you go to something like mid journey, you type something in and, and it creates an image for you out of nothing based on its interpretation of what you typed and the models that it was trained upon. Then there's what we have in Photoshop beta, which is generative fill. And so that, while you can with, with generative fill create something out of nothing, what a lot of photographers are using it for is to either expand a canvas, you know, take a vertical canvas and make it wider or add something to it. But the photo, the original photo is there. And that's the, the point of this video here where I'm going to take photos that, that I took, I went to the location, I pressed the button and I'm going to use AI to change them. And in this case, I'm going to change them to a different artistic medium. So like oil painting, watercolor, um, and color pencil drawing. So like, I think to me, that's, I know a lot of photographers who are into that kind of thing. There are, there are apps out there that, uh, photographers use to add that painterly look to their photo. Nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. Like if, if that's what you want to turn your photo into, cool. So I just want to show you how you can use a generative fill in Photoshop beta to do that because it's actually pretty cool. Now let's jump over here. But before we do, I just want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Brian and I help photographers like you get better looking photos. And in this case, maybe art pieces using apps like Lightroom and Photoshop and other third party apps. So with that, let's get going. All right, so before we jump into Photoshop, when I released my last video covering generative fill in Photoshop beta, uh, a few people had asked me if there's a way to do that uh, by sending your photo to Lightroom. Because in that video, I had my uh, images already open in Photoshop, and in this video, it's the same case. But let me show you really quickly how to do that. If you wanna send your photo from Lightroom to Photoshop beta, there's one quick thing you have to do. First. You'll go to Lightroom and then go to Preferences. And this is the same on Mac and Windows. And then you'll go to the External Editing tab. And you'll just want to make sure that Adobe Photoshop Beta is selected um, and not 2023, which is the production version. Now, if you don't see uh, Adobe Photoshop Beta, that's possible because you don't have Photoshop Beta installed. You can uh, do that by going to the Creative Cloud app and then going here to the Beta apps and then making sure that you install Photoshop beta, obviously you'll need a valid Creative Cloud subscription uh, to do that. So once you do that, you should be able to select the Photoshop beta. Now, a few quick words about beta. It's beta. So don't expect that all of your panels, if you use some sort of third party panel or plugin, don't expect them to work in beta. In all likelihood, they probably won't. I don't recommend you reach out to the creators of those panels and plugins and ask them why it's not working. They're under um, no obligation to make their, their stuff work in betas. It's a different story when it becomes production, but that's just something to keep in mind. And then the last thing is just remember to change this back, uh, in Lightroom, if you want to work in the production environment for whatever reason. But again, I've got the images already loaded in uh, Photoshop over here. So let's get started. So th this whole process is actually pretty straightforward and um, all it requires you to do is create a, a kind of a partial opacity selection on your image. I'll show you how to do that. There are different ways to do that. Um, there are other people who have created similar video tutorials on this specific process, but this is the way that I found that is easiest. It's most straightforward um, and, and it just requires very little effort. So the first thing you'll want to do is select your background layer. Now you'll notice that we don't have... Um, the uh, generative fill prompt over here, which we normally should. That's because we don't have any sort of selection made yet. So 
here's what happens if you just make a selection by going to uh, by clicking command or control a so here first you see um the generative fill boxes here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to type in uh, oil painting and for the purpose of this video i'm just going to cut out the processing time altogether so that we don't waste the time so uh, i'll click generate and you can see that <laughs> it generated oil paintings. I mean, just like random oil smears uh, on the canvas. And that's because uh, we didn't make the, the proper selection for this to work. And so to, to make the proper selection, I'm gonna delete this layer here. Again, you'll open your image up, you'll select the background layer. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the quick mask mode. That's this icon right here. It's right below the, the foreground background color swatches. When you click on it, you'll know you're activated because the icon will change to a solid uh, kind of like a quick mask icon. The next thing you're going to do is fill this image uh, with 30% gray. And to do that, we're going to go to edit and then fill. You can also press shift delete or shift backspace on windows. And then in the fill dialog box, drop down, select color. And then for the blue channel here, type in 30% or you can use the hex code 4D, 4D, 4D. And when you click OK and then click OK again, you'll see that a partial mask has been made. This is, this is all you need to do. Or at least this is what you need to do with the, with the selection, with the mask selection. So now what you will want to do is deselect or disable quick mask mode. And, but we're still good. That's still there. You know it's there because that generative fill box is here. And now I can go ahead and type in oil painting and then click generate. And now you can see because we used that uh, quick mask mode, it actually applied the oil painting prompt to the image. It's not just a random oil painting. And you can see that we have these different options here. And some of these are actually pretty cool. Like this middle one here is pretty cool, although it's, it doesn't really look like an oil painting. Um, this one does though, I think that's cool. And of course, if you're not happy with any of these, you can go ahead and click generate and it'll create another set of three um, options for you. And that's actually a point I want to make. This is not necessarily a one click, you know, perfect thing. I actually spent a lot of time generating and generating, uh, different options not, until I found one that I was happy with. Uh, so just remember this still has a way to go this technology. This, there's, there's still a lot of improvements that could be made. Um, so don't expect that when you click generate the first time, it's going to give you this work of art, so to speak. Uh, you might have to try a lot. So one of the things you can do, though, to help Adobe, um, if there's a, a one that you really like, when you hover over the thumbnail, you'll see the little three dots over here. And if you click on it, you can say good result. And that will tell Adobe that, oh, OK, for oil painting, this particular result was good. Of course, you can go ahead and uh, give it a bad result, which I've done plenty of times. I think that's as helpful. And then you can also uh, delete. And if there's something really weird in the image, you can report that. So just something to keep in mind. And to prove that, you know, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I'm going to hide this layer. I actually already have a generated result that I saved here. So um, I wasn't sure when I recorded the video how long it would take me to uh, get a good result. So I found one that I liked and I saved it in its own group. But you can see here, um, I actually like the one I saved better uh, as far as like an oil painting. So I'm gonna delete this layer here. And here, this is the, the, the generated layer that Adobe created earlier when I was uh, playing around with this. So that's all you have to do to get the result is you highlight the background layer, enable the uh, quick mask mode, apply a 30% gray by uh, going to edit fill and then selecting 30% for the blue channel disable the quick mask mode, and then uh, hit uh, type in your prompt, uh, what kind of medium you want and hit generate and then roll the dice. Now, there's actually another thing we can do here. We can take it a step further. So here we have our, our oil painting and you can see if you zoom in, oil paintings typically have a little bit of texture to them. Uh, so what we can do is if I go ahead and create a new stamped layer by pressing command option shift E or control alt shift E on windows, now we have a new layer here. I can go to filter and then go to filter gallery and we can add a little bit of texture. And to do that, I'm gonna go to the texture folder here, drop it down. I'll go to texturizer 
you want to make sure that canvas is selected over here. I find that scaling at, um, at 100% is fine. Relief, you want that to be low, somewhere between two and four, because watch, if we bring it out, you see how it becomes like overly canvassed. So usually like two or three or four looks good, but check that out. That's actually pretty cool. Like it looks like a canvas. Um, and so you won't see it so much when you are um, in this kind of full screen view. That's why I wanted to zoom in so you can see the texture. Uh, that looks awesome to me. Like that's so cool. Uh, the light, you can change the direction. It depends on you know how you want to simulate the light on the, uh, the canvas. When you're done, just click OK. And now you have the, uh, the textured image. And again, if you zoom in, you can see the texture there. Oh God, that's so cool. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, to me, that's just so much fun. And again, uh, you can see that if we hide these layers here, there's the original photo again. I was in Japan, in Hokkaido, I took this photo. Um, and, you know, just to create something a little bit different, I think it's, I think it's so much fun. And it's already included. If you have a valid Creative Cloud subscription, you can get Photoshop beta and, and just play around with this. And so it's, because it, it's not something I ever would have done myself. I, I, I'm not a painter, I'm not into oil painting or watercolor, but here I can kind of simulate it with my own photos. And, you know, I have family members who I know would love this. Like that's just, I know for a fact they would, they would enjoy the photo, but they would love it as kind of a, this kind of a rendition. So let's move on. I'm going to show you another example here. And um, again, I'm just going to walk you through this pretty quickly. This case, I'm going to use watercolor. So uh, background layer, again, notice that we don't have um, the generative fill text prompt here because we don't have a selection. So we're going to go and enable quick mask mode, shift delete or shift backspace, color, make sure that we have 30% here uh, listed and then click OK. There's our selection. Now when we disable quick mask mode, and so now we can type in something like watercolor painting, and you can even go a step further, like in the style of uh, Vincent van uh, Gogh. So you can, you can kind of use a, an artist or a particular style. You can say with, with you can write with, with greater detail um, or more precise brush strokes. So I've experimented with all of these things. And then when you're done, you can click generate to uh, get your options. And so here are the three options. Um, depending on what you're going for, you might like it, you know, it might not work for you again. You can always go ahead and click generate to create a new set. But just like before, I've got another option that I created here. Um, and you can see this is the, this is the, the option I found earlier that I kind of liked. This one's not bad, but, but I do like this one here. Um, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to bring this and move this layer out over the, the, the group here. And so here are two options. Now, uh, let's hide this layer. Let's go back here and I'm going to create a new merged layer just like before um, with command option shift E. What I want to do is I want to simulate as if we painted this on watercolor paper. And to do that, just like before, we're going to go to filter and then we'll go to filter gallery. Now we're going to drop down from texturizer and we're going to go to water paper. Now let's zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And this definitely reflects what painting on a watercolor paper would look like. It's, you definitely get a richer, more contrasty look because the paper tends to soak the paint more. And when you're done, just click OK. That'll return back and you can see we have it on its own layer here. And it looks like a watercolor painting, which I think is super cool. All right, let's move on to the final example here. Uh, this is a photo that I actually edited in a video a couple weeks ago. Uh, and so I thought it'd be fun to use this again. So for this one, we're going to use a uh, color pencil to simulate it. So I'll walk through this really quickly. Again, background layer selected, quick mask mode. Let's go to fill, make sure that we are at 30% gray and then disable. And there we go. Now we can type in here, colored pencil and then click generate. Now, you know, it's kind of questionable whether this is actually colored pencil or not, <laughs> you can see how they're pretty, they're pretty funky. But fortunately, I've got one here already that I like, um, that I saved. And it kind of has a little bit of a color pencil look, but 
there are some things that we can do. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that other layer. I don't need it. I've got this one here. And you can see when you, when you select a generative fill layer, one of the cool things is that you'll see the prompt that you use. So I use color pencil drawing and you'll see all the different, you see how I generated all these different options. So you can always go back to it as long as you've got that layer there, which I think is pretty cool. Now here's one of the things that you can do, um, which I think is kind of fun. You can see that the door just looks weird. I want to add a little bit of the original photo back in, and it's actually convenient because when Photoshop creates a generative fill layer, it also has a layer mask that it adds. So what I can do is take my brush by pressing B and I can drop the opacity, you know, somewhere around 70 or so percent. And I can start bringing in some of the original detail to the, to the, uh, it's actually not a photo. It's kind of an art piece now, which I think is kind of cool. When you look at this now, um, it, it kind of, it has this weird vibe to it. Like it's clearly art because you can see, for example, in the sky, um, the way it looks like it was almost uh, drawn with pencil, with colored pencil. But then you've got this photorealistic um, look here. And, and what I'll do is actually, I'll kind of, I'm, I pressed X to change from black to white. And I'm gonna bring back some of that original pencil drawing, almost like a vignette around the door. Uh, and, and I just, I think there's something very cool, especially because the way the door is kind of like a portal. Um, so the other thing you could do if you want, you can, you can drop the opacity of the overall layer if you want to bring back some of the original photo. The other thing we can do uh, is if we create a new layer here, a stamped visible layer, just like before, uh, and I bring it down. So what I'll do is I will take the, the two layers here and I will simulate an Orton look. So I'm going to go here to uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then your, the, the radius of the blur is up to you. The, the higher the, the pixel uh, radius, generally the, the, the stronger the look is in my opinion. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and change the blending mode uh, to probably, let's see, soft light. And then I'm going to bring the opacity of that down. And so you kind of get now that soft glow as well, in addition to the uh, colored pencil look. And so there you go. Those are three different artistic mediums that I used Photoshop generative fill to take a photo that I already took and simulate it in whether it was oil painting or watercolor or colored pencil. I, I just think it's so cool. Uh, and I think it can make a completely unique way to, to present your photo in a, in a different way. Like I have no painting skills whatsoever. I know that, but if I can kind of simulate it based off of one of my photos, I think that's pretty cool. So I hope it inspires you as well. If you want to learn more about generative fill, I have this video here showing you a few more practical examples for photographers. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button. Of course, hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed and the bell icon to get notified of new videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.